Hello guys, in today's video I'll be showing you the best apps that you can use for astrophotography. So first and foremost, if you want to determine the border scale of your location, one easy way to do it is by using a weather app called Clear Outside. It is pretty much a weather app made specifically for astronomers, and it also tells you the border scale of a particular location. So that will also allow you to determine exactly what things you can photograph and see in the night sky. The app itself is free and is made by the guys in the first light optics. But the app itself also shows you sunrise and sunset times as well as moonrise and moonset times as well as the moon phase. It splits the time up into hours and normally the time itself is split into red, orange and green to determine the scene conditions during those particular hours. The app also splits the clouds into low cloud, medium cloud and high cloud. So it really does give you a good picture as to what the weather is like in that area in that particular time period. You also have other things like ISS flybys as well as how long it will last. There's also a visibility rating out of 10, any fog, rain, and you also get the dew point temperature which can be useful when you're photographing the night sky. And the cold weather conditions itself will start giving your camera fog and mist. So your images are gonna start getting blurry and foggy. But of course the weather forecasting ability of Clear Outside is not 100% accurate, but you might find it far more reliable than most other sources when it comes to weather forecasting. I only use Clear Outside to determine the border location of a particular location, but I don't really use it that much when it comes to the weather forecast because based on my experience, it's not really that accurate when it comes to predicting the weather in my location. But it's still a good app for astronomy, so I really do highly recommend it. So another weather forecasting app that I'd like to recommend is called Windy. It is a free app that's made by the guys at Windy TSE. And so far, this weather app is the one that I use most of the time to determine the weather forecast in my location and from other locations around me. The app also allows you to see the wind patterns all around the world as well as where the clouds are, how they look, and the direction that they are going. You can also see the temperature in different parts of the world as well as the conditions of the sea, the air quality, where rain and thunder are more prominent, and it also allows you to determine the conditions of the upper atmosphere. And with that, it'll allow you to plan out your astrophotography sessions. Because of course, you also have to take into consideration the conditions of the upper atmosphere if you're trying to photograph things like planets and other deep sky objects. It also tells you which areas have high pressure and which areas have low pressure. As well as the dew points, snow depth, and many other things. And so far, this is the weather forecasting app that I use the most. And many of its features can really come in handy for many purposes, which is why I also recommend Windy. And all that you have to do to determine the weather forecast of a particular location is to zoom in on a particular part of the map, zoom in on the area that you want to determine the weather forecast in, and you have to tap and hold that particular location, and then you tap forecast for this location, and you'll be given the weather forecast for that particular location, so it can really be useful. Now the next app that I'd like to recommend is a paid app called Photo Pills, but paying for the app can really be worth it. It'll allow you to plan out for your next imaging session in a particular location, especially if you are traveling somewhere else, or even in your own home. You can also you can determine the position of the moon, the position of things like the Milky Way and the sun, and as well as the position of the subject that you want to photograph. The app gives you so much information that it can really help you a lot in your astrophotography, even in terms of photography itself, instead of just photography and it's also one of those apps that you have to get in order to get your head around you also get the option to determine the moon phase of a particular time period as well as what meteor showers are active and when the peak is going to be you also have moonset and moonrise like in clear outside as well as sunrise and sunset times and when the Milky Way core will be visible and when it will set but another great thing about photo pills is that it has augmented reality. So it'll allow you to know where things like the moon is as well as the Milky Way galaxy and the sun and many other things in the sky itself. So it's a pretty good tool and it's well worth using. And don't mind what other people will think about you because they might think that you're taking weird angled selfies. And another really good thing about photo pills is that it has this thing called night AR that shows you exactly where the Milky Way is. And so with this, you will be able to know where the Milky Way is going to be in the night sky, as well as its orientation. And you can also change your location by tapping in the settings in the top right corner and change your position and change the date. 
So say if you want to photograph the night sky during a new moon, you can plug information in there, and you can also put in the position that you're going to be at. And it'll show you where the Milky Way is going to be at, at that particular time period. So it's a really handy tool when it comes to planning for your astrophotography. So if you want to learn more about photo pills, I will leave a link to their website in the description below. Now another app that I would like to recommend is called Phases of the Moon Pro. Although there are two versions of the app called one is ad free and the other one is not ad free. But the ad free version is a paid version, but you could use either of the two. Now, what the app does is that it gives you a live view of the moon phase itself and it can also be placed as a widget in your home screen so that you will be able to know what phase the moon is in without having to check the app. And so, if you tap the widget, it brings up more information. And you can also determine what phase the moon will be in in a particular time period. And it also shows you the lunar libration or the moon's wobble as it orbits around the Earth. It also shows you when the moon will rise as well as when it will set. The app itself also gives you the names of the craters as well as the landing sites of the Apollo missions that went to the moon long ago. But if you're on an iOS, you might want to try looking into Deluxe Moon instead. Now another app that I would like to recommend, and the one that is also very useful in planning your astrophotography is called Stellarium. And this is surely my favorite night sky emulator app. Now there are a number of night sky emulators out there like Sky Safari 6 and Skyview, but this one is my top favorite. It is easy to use and it also has a lot of visuals. And it also contains everything that you need. And it also allows you to put in your date, location, as well as the time, so that you will be able to see what will be in the night sky, or what's going to be in the sky itself. And so it's good to be able to find out where the planets are going to be, where the stars and the constellations are going to be, as including the Milky Way galaxy. And it also has a desktop app, but I mainly use the mobile app. It also has a good red light mode on the app that allows you to preserve your night vision in case you're out there in the night sky taking photos or planning out new compositions, or just stargazing. It takes your eyes about half an hour to adjust in the dark, or about 30 minutes, but, and if you look at a bright light, then your night vision will be gone, and you'll have to wait for another half an hour. Now the thing about red light is that it doesn't interfere with your night vision, because well, the human eye doesn't really respond very well to red light. So you can just sit there and learn some new things about the constellations as well as new stars and new things in the night sky without destroying your night vision. Now another app that I would like to recommend is called Night Screen. It's pretty much a simple but effective screen dimmer for your smartphone for more comfortable use in the dark. So the app itself applies an overlay filter that acts as a dimmer to darken the screen. And in case you're out there stargazing or photographing the night sky, it can help you further preserve your night vision using night screen because it dims everything on your phone way beyond what your default settings can achieve. So it can really come in handy. I use it most of the time when I am out there photographing the night sky and I'm scrolling through things like Facebook or Messenger while my imaging rig is automatically photographing the night sky and I'm stargazing and I want to preserve my night vision as much as possible. So it can really come in handy and that is why I also recommend it. Now if you want to see or photograph the International Space Station and get live updates about what's happening in the International Space Station as well as when the ISS will pass over your location or if you just want to view the ISS through their cameras and see the sunrise or, the, or see the sunset in low Earth orbit then I would recommend an app called ISS Live Now. The app itself has a nice list of all the upcoming ISS passes over your location and you can also view the sunrise and the sunset as the International Space Station continues to orbit around the Earth through their cameras. And it also shows you where the ISS is in the world. It also gives you access to NASA television. It allows you to have a virtual tour around the ISS to know what it's like on the inside. As well as who is in space on board the ISS, the European Space Agency or the ESA TV, and many other things. So it is also a really handy tool when it comes to knowing where the ISS is as well as planning your astrophotography with the ISS included. But it can also be a good app when you just want to view the sunrise and sunset from the ISS or view Earth from space live. So even if you're not into astrophotography, if you love space and astronomy, then ISS Live Now is surely for you. 
And it also shows you the duration of the ISS pass as well as where the ISS will pass in the sky. And so it's a really nice and simple to use app and you can set up notifications for when the ISS will pass through a sunset or a sunrise and as well as when the ISS will pass over your location before they happen just in case you forget. Now another app that I would like to recommend is called Heavens Above and it can be very useful if you want to know more about the satellites instead of just the ISS. But it also includes things about the ISS obviously. But the app also shows you all the different satellites and where they are going to be during that night. And you can also click on them and you'll get a map as to how they will cross the night sky. Much like in the ISS Live Now app. So there's a really good in-depth knowledge here as well as a full-blown catalog for each satellite. And all of the things that are orbiting the Earth. At the same time, it also shows you when the sun itself was set and when the moon will rise, as well as when twilight will end, as well as when sunrise will be. Now another app that I would like to recommend, especially for those people who want to know when the next lunar or solar eclipse will be, or at least when the next planetary transit will be, of say like things like Mercury or Venus, then Eclipse 2.0 is the one for you. So the app pretty much shows you all of the eclipses that have happened since then from 1900 up until the year 2100. But you can also extend that from 1550 to 2300. So it has the list of all of the eclipses, lunar, planetary, and solar eclipses. And this is the app that I use when trying to know when the next solar eclipse will be as well as when the lunar eclipse will be. Like for example, right now it's 2021 and the next solar eclipse will be on April 20, 2023 and it's going to be a partial solar eclipse from my location. And as for the next lunar eclipse, it's going to be a total lunar eclipse on May the 26th, 2021. So two months from now. And it also gives a simulation of the event itself that will allow you to determine how the eclipse will go. As well as the time that it will begin, the time the eclipse will be at its greatest, as well as the time that the eclipse will end. As well as a countdown as to when the eclipse will start. And in the app, you can also search by event or by location to determine when the next eclipse is and when the last eclipse was. So it's a really handy app when it comes to planning your next eclipse shots as well as knowing when the last eclipses were. So that's also why I recommend this app and so far it's been accurate. And like I said, I use this app to plan my eclipse compositions months or even years ahead. So it's a really good app to have. Besides, it's a free one. So it is also very informative. And now the last app that I would like to recommend is called Sky Wiki. It has many features like a periscope as well as an astronomical calendar that allows you to know what the next astronomical events will be as well as what and when the next meteor showers will be. And this is also one of the apps that I use for my astronomical events videos where I talk about the upcoming astronomical events for the upcoming month. And it also has a sky map that allows you to know what's in the night sky and as well as where in the night sky that you're looking at just by pointing your phone up to the sky and you'll already know what region of the night sky you are pointing at. And it can also scrub through time to determine what's going to be the night sky during a particular time period. And it also has a periscope as well as news regarding space and astronomy. So it is a very handy app especially when it comes to knowing what the next astronomical events will be and planning ahead of time. The app also allows you to view images of the current astronomy picture of the day or APOD, the Hubble picture of the week, the lunar image of the day, and many other things. So those are my 10 favorite apps for astrophotography. So if I missed one out and you think I should have included it in the video, please do let me know in the comment section below. And please do like and share this video to whoever might find it useful. So if you're planning to enjoy in the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies. And see you next time. Thank you.